Okay, we've got a lot of things to work with here. So we're gonna need the monkey to collect all the bananas. And the way the bananas are spread out on the islands, I can tell my for loop for collecting the bananas is going to need to be for I and islands. Um, the other thing I can see I need a for loop for is these crocodiles. They are um, they are not facing in the right direction. So we're going to need to fix that too. Um, and obviously we're going to need to do get the crocodiles straight, creating a bridge before we head to all the islands. So let's start with that for C and crocodiles. In this case, we want them to C, turn to, could either do that island or let's just do this banana. We need them all to be facing to create that line. Um, so that should work. <laughs> Yep. Now, I knew I wasn't done, but I wanted to just know that this was good because real programmers test their work. But also notice, here's the clue. Let the island show you the way. So just like with the bushes or other things, the islands, they're trying to give us a hint to make our next for loop about the islands. Um, and I don't want it to be here. I want it to be here because they're not a loop inside of a loop. They're two separate loops. All the crocodiles turn and then the monkey walks on the islands. And sometimes that can be confusing. So you always want to clarify what's happening inside of a loop, what's happening separate from a loop, before the loop, after the loop. For I in islands. And you should know the deal. Turn to I, set distance to I. And so if the monkey goes to all of the islands, it will get all of the bananas. And we didn't have to write 25,000 lines of code <laughs> to make it happen.